When it comes to sodic soils, what we're really talking about is high sodium levels. Now there are some other factors that people look at to technically call it a sodic soil, but we don't need to get super fancy here. Sodic soil is high sodium. What's high sodium? To me, it's anything above 1% on the base saturation test, and especially once it gets above 3 or 5%, your soil is really starting to die. So we've got to figure out a way to get this problem solved, and that's what we want to talk about today. Let me just start with this real quick. How does it get that high in the first place? Usually it's one of two things. Either you have a drainage issue, or you have just simply applied way too much of something that has lots of sodium, and that could be manure. The other thing to mention is this doesn't happen overnight. It's not like, oh, I had great soil and then boom, I've got a sodic soil and I can't raise anything out there. Even the weeds like kochia won't grow in those areas of my field. No, this is something that happened over 20 years, 30 years, maybe even more. It just happened gradually and it didn't get dealt with along the way. That's why we're bringing this up. We, we mentioned the two main causes, drainage and perhaps over application of manure or some other sodium containing product. If you're doing those things, if you say, well, I've got manure and I've got to put it out there, not on that ground you don't. You can find a new home for it because manure at a low dose is a great thing. Manure at an overdose is a problem. Okay, so what do you do? How do you fix this? It starts with drainage. You've got to put drain tile out there. I'm not so worried about the above ground drainage. I'm much more focused on the below ground drainage. Here's the next thing. With sodium, we want to turn it into a salt because salts are leachable. So we've got to have the drainage done first. Once that's done, now we can start addressing the sodium issue. And if your sodium levels are really high, 5%, 10% or more, this is going to take a long, 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 long time to get fixed. But you got to get started on it. That's what you do. Put the tile in first. Then make sure on your soil test, you're getting good readings on, hey, where are my sodium levels at? And then also, how are my calcium and my sulfur levels? If I have low calcium, I want to get more calcium out there. If I have low sulfur, I want to get more sulfur out there. So that's really how you fix this whole thing is get your calcium levels up, get your sulfur sulfur levels up. That sulfur and the purpose is to combine with the sodium to form sodium sulfate. That is leachable. That will flush out once you fix your drainage. Another thing you can do to try to speed that process up of reclaiming this sodic soil or soil that's trending towards going sodic is just to get some organic material out there. Oftentimes we'll see farmers grinding up bales or just putting other organic material out in the soil to try to get something started that could help speed things up a little bit too. Like Darren said earlier, this doesn't happen overnight and you're not going to fix it overnight. So one of the things we got to be honest with ourselves, is it worth spending the money to do anything with it or do we just completely abandon it? Honestly, if I could sell it for even half price, I might seriously consider doing that because it's going to take a long time. You can get that sodium down eventually if it's really, really high, but it just takes time and dollars and commitment and it stinks when every year along the way you're going to lose money. So really be monitoring your soil and if you ever see your soil tests go above 1% on sodium, you should be on high alert. That is where you're going to end up with these sodic problems eventually unless you get after it today. One other thing you want to get after right away if you see it out on your farm is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.